The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Also with you. It means a lot. It's been a busy week, just like any other week. I mean, so many times we've gathered this morning, and a few times people have said, one day at a time, Noah one day at a time. I want to show you this picture that I have, and it looked nothing like that <laughs> when I stared up, but I did see like a red tint, and I thought, okay, well, let's see what the iPhone can do. Isn't that amazing? It picks up the stars. This is Round Lake, and Abby and I and the girls, we have a small little cabin there. This is Muskie Bay, as I've shared with you in the past. It's uh, near Le Couture, uh Indian Reservation there in Wisconsin, about an hour and a half. And this little cabin has a lot of mice in it right now. <laughs> so I'm working on that and projects and getting ready for snowfall, and it's not far from the American Berkebiner Trail, so we'll be skiing and biking there and uh, prepping for a, that seasonal change. My girls and Abby are with my mom, and so they couldn't be with there with me. So I, I sat there by myself, and I fished. Some bass, um, and in a little bit, we'll talk about fishing with the very near and dear youth in our congregation that is taking the step of baptism this morning. Broken, that can happen from time to time. Certainly grateful. Last week, we prayed for rain. Huh? And now it's here, and I'm a little chilled. Could use some sun. <laughs> God's like, oh, Noah, you're never happy with what you got. But it's good. Good to get a little rain. The brokenness that we carry into this moment, there's some disagreement. It's a highly charged time right now, but it's a reminder supported by God's word and sacrament. We can disagree culturally and, yes, certainly politically and still love unconditionally. Unconditional love is yours. It's yours. And I'll remind you of that in a moment in the sacrament of holy baptism. Let's share this love with each other now. Let's say, hello, good morning, how are you? <laughs> Greet somebody new, my name is...
You may be seated. Saints of God, you may be seated. So getting some fishing in, not having a ton of luck. Talked to John and Jan about maybe a muskie at some point, but catching um, some perch. Uh, so I'll take any feedback. I have a beetle jig here that somebody said would help. I have the Strike King here, and this is for a very special person, along with a rod and reel from Holy Cross Evangelical Lutheran Church. I was thinking about you, Archer, and this is a big, big moment. Not just for you, but for all of us. Because in baptism, we see a glimpse of something truly, truly profound. God's love breaking into the world now in a very tangible way in water. You're not a little kid anymore, and that's quite obvious there. So handsome in a suit and a wonderful tie with eagles on it. And you get, as you and I have spent time with, it's clear that you are highly intelligent and just a joy to be around. Uh, we went on a canoe trip together, and Archer was my canoeing partner. And we canoed down the Namakagan together. And he's strong, and he's tough, but he's a joy to be around. He's a good friend, somebody wonderful to listen to. Life, as you know, and as you now progress into adolescence is wrestling with the hard stuff, the doubts, the questions about choosing what to believe in, even when it's tough. And this is what baptism is all about. It's now a public declaration for Archer. It's a line in the sand. It's him and all of us saying that I trust I trust in God who sees me, knows me, loves me, no matter what. No matter what. In the Lutheran Church, we believe that baptism is more than just a symbol. It's a sacred act now where God's grace is made real and present for Archer, and we're reminded of for all of us. It's a washing away of sin, a drowning of the old self, and rising to new life in Christ. Holy Cross, we're on this journey together, supporting each other, reminding each other God's grace when we stumble and fall. And you've been that for me and my family as well. And now we make promises today that we will do the same for Archer and his family. Archer's baptism is a reminder to all of us of the incredible gift we've all been given unconditional love. The water now that I'm about to pour over your head, Archer, is a powerful reminder of God's love washing over you, cleansing and renewing you. It connects you to Jesus for your lifetime and life eternal. Who was baptized in the Jordan himself? And to all the saints, I love that hymn, Rise Up, O Saints of God, you bet, who have gone before. So, Archer, come on up with your family and your sponsor, Archer, Thanos, Nyland. And you can stand right behind the font there. We give thanks to God for you, and now welcome you into the church, into our shared mission to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. All right, so, Artemis, can you hold that there? Good. And can you hold the mini king spinner bait, strike king there? Good. Archer, let your light shine before others. 
so that they may see your good works and that they may glorify your Father in heaven. Okay, Archer. Go ahead, can you bend over the water here? Archer. Thanos, Nyland, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Isn't he a handsome young man? <laughs> there you go. I can barely reach up here. He's so tall. That's great. Yeah, it's the shoes. There you go. Hold on to that. Archer, here's your baptism. Put that in a safe spot for keeping. It's funny, this week we had somebody call the church office that was baptized here in 1980, and they wanted to see if we still had record of it. And of course, we, we do. So we will have that for you as well. This is now just the beginning. We've had a lot together already, and this is a beginning, another step in your journey together. Live your life boldly, Archer. Ask the hard questions, and never forget the love that surrounds you this day and all your days in Christ. Let's give him a round of applause, huh? <laughs> love you, bud. Well, go ahead and, and take a seat, and uh, we will greet you during our treats time as well. This Tuesday night, our beloved Swedish meatball supper drive through is happening right here at Holy Cross. As I've seen all the preparation and anticipation, I see you. I see a church built on the sh shoulders of those who came before us. Immigrants, pioneers, and Jesus followers who made Duluth the diverse, f vibrant place we know today. And now it's your turn to keep that spirit of hospitality alive, and you are hitting it out of the park, I hear. 1,725 balls of meat were put together, rolled yesterday. An amazing feat. And... What was shared with me was that, hey, and it was actually a lot of fun. See? Common purpose. We remember, of course, in our heritage, the Scandinavians, with their hearty food and strong faith who helped settle the city. They brought their traditions that remind us to gather around the table with good food and even better company. This Tuesday will honor them with a meal that has been passed down through the generations, the humble yet delicious Swedish meatball, made with love by your very own hands. And let's not forget the Italians. They taught us the importance of family and food. And on Tuesday, we will follow in their footsteps, again welcoming our neighbors with open arms and full plates. But of course, it's just not... Swedes and Italians. It's about our rich Native American culture, African American culture, the Germans, the Finns, the Irish, the Danes, the Poles, the English, new immigrants, and so many more who have woven their traditions into this church and city. Every one of them has made us who we are today. And this supper now is a way to celebrate that rich diversity as well as the love and unity and faith that we share in this special place. And now we prep once again now to share with the city. And every year I look at the weather. Oh, please, <laughs> is it going to be warm? Uh, and as we stand out here and, and greet. And like you, I've taken on different iterations over the years. Uh, but your wise counsel, no, we need no front and center greeting people, greeting everyone who comes, and they'll get a card with a very important message of God's unconditional love for them. 
Thank you, Holy Cross. Once again, I so very much look forward to Tuesday. Your efforts do not go unnoticed. Gavin, is Gavin here? Do I see Gavin anywhere? Gavin? Gavin, go ahead and stand up there. Now, this is a, uh, another wonderful young man in our midst, and every year I buy a Christmas wreath from him, and so he'll be back in our lobby this morning. Scouting USA, uh, Troop 7, Mr. Gavin Krieger, and he's selling these October 7th through the 30th, and they're lovely and a great way to support Gavin, the troop, and that mission in our neighborhood as well. Thanks, buddy. Prayers this morning. I got to talk to Jana, and she gave me a lovely update on, on her health, and she said, make sure you greet everybody. Uh, give everybody my love. So we'll continue to pray for Jana and Jason. I got to talk to Shirley Bow. Did Bill pass? He did. He's a saints of God. Yeah, and, and with his creator. Blessed be God for the power of the resurrection for Bill Cox. Faith, a very important part of his life. Yeah. And now fulfilled. I spoke to Eleanor's family this weekend, and I'll be responding and caring for her today and tomorrow. And my mom is worshiping with us again this morning. Not easy for my mom, but she's with us in worship and still in transition care there in White Bear Lake. For Lebanon, Iran, Israel, Gaza, Ukraine, and now the upcoming election. I know a number of you have already cast your votes in mail-in. Um, and before you know it, the second will be here. And so we hold our country in prayer. These are prayers, God, and we commend them to you in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. In today's Old Testament reading, the prophet Amos, a simple shepherd from Judah, found himself trusted in the bustling, opulent world of the northern kingdom of Israel. He saw wealth and prosperity. Yes, but it was a facade beneath the service. Injustice festered like a hidden wound. The powerful trampled on the poor, turning justice into a bitter prison, like a wormwood and casting righteousness to the ground. Amos, the fire of God burning in his heart, cried out, Seek the Lord and live. He warned them that their fancy houses and lush vineyards built on the backs of oppressed would not save them from the fire of God's judgment. Hate evil and love good, he implored, and establish justice in the gate. His words echoed down through the ages, a stark reminder that true worship cannot e exist alongside social injustice. God cares deeply about the plight of the oppressed, and so must those who claim to follow him. But what is justice without wisdom? And what is wisdom without an understanding of time's rent rentless march? The psalmist, perhaps Moses himself, gazing back on life filled with both triumph and tragedy, cries out, so teach us to, to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Life he knew is but a fleeting breath, a whisper in the grand symphony of eternity. True live, truly live to make each day count. We must grasp the preciousness of time and seek the wisdom that comes from above. Psalms 90 is called to live in light of eternity. Only by recognizing the brevity of life can we prioritize what truly matters and live in the way that honors God and blesses us others. And now we gain this wisdom, this strength to live justly and purposely in the world filled with suffering and temptations. The author of Hebrews point us to the throne of grace where Jesus, our high priest, awaits with open arms. 
Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We are not alone in our struggles. The word of God, sharper than two-edged sword, pierces through our facades, lays bare our hearts, but is not a weapon of condemnation, but of healing. It reveals our weakness so that we might with boldness approach the throne of grace and find the strength that we need to live each day with purpose. Justice and love, so we can approach God with confidence, knowing that Jesus understands our weakness and intercedes for us. Please rise and welcome the gospel. A rich young man, desperate for eternal life, knelt before Jesus. Sell all you have, give to the poor, and follow me, Jesus instructed. The man's face fell. His wealth, his security, was his idol. He couldn't let go. He walked away, his dreams fading into the dust. How hard is it for the rich to enter God's kingdom, Jesus explained. The disciples were shocked. Then who can be saved, they cried. With man it is impossible, Jesus reassured. But with God, for all things are possible. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. From Amos to Psalms, to Hebrews, to Mark. In the course of the prophets, my professor once remarked that three-fourths of us who studied Amos with him would probably never pick up the book of the Bible again and study in depth. Because you can get a kind of sense of it and a taste from it. You can hear the negative connotation that runs through the book. He speaks with raw honesty. Do you know anyone like that in your life? We have a few friends. They work at the dental clinic and their original from out east, and I, I see a difference in their temperament and how they hold their relationships, how they hold themselves, how they even have conversation, and they can be quite blunt, quite raw. But there's no comparison here when it comes to Amos. The social injustices of Israel and the looming consequences he calls the nation to wake up. There's a lot of conversation about that over the last few years, woke culture. He is not mincing words here. He refers to the wealthy, the wealthy of Israel, cows of Bashan. Have you ever used that as an insult? <laughs> He's referring to the wealthy, 
the wealthy women of Samaria who lived in luxury and indulged themselves at the expense of everybody else. The haves, the haves nots. Bashan was known for its fertile land and overly plump, well fed cattle. So, calling the wealthy, read it with me, cows of Bashan. It was a sharp way of criticizing their excessive lifestyles and lack of concern for justice. He's livid, and it's a vivid, biting metaphor. And if that's not enough, he goes on to declare that God hates Israel's empty worship. His warnings are stark likening God's people to a childless virgin abandoned to die. Yet amidst this sharp, harsh, biting judgment, he hints at something more. It seems like so full stop, like where do you go from here? But then he says, read it with me. It may be that the Lord will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. <laughs> he calls for repentance through active imperatives. Seek the Lord. Seek good. Establish justice. And all of a sudden, there's something more to be seen. This isn't a clear ending here. There's hope. I was just listening to a lovely interview with Jane Goodall. And Jane, she witnessed and took in data after data of chimpanzees for decades, and she was able to demonstrate that they have feelings, that they use tools, and on and on, and it changed science and behavior health for the rest of eternity. And what she said was, is that yes, the science is important, but it's the hope. She's 90 years old now. It's the hope that she instills in those who are willing to listen, to take care, to conserve God's creation. Our behavior matters, for God's long game is one where mercy can still emerge even when we only see endings. Even when we only see endings. Now, most people think, this is why I love Amos, but most people think they see and they experience the tough stuff in life and they only see an ending. I'll get around to being happy. I'll get around to my dreams. And then another day passes and they keep pushing those dreams down the road. But if these last few weeks of my life for my family have taught me anything, it's this. Read it with me. You only understand the power of one day when you're threatened with never having another one. When you feel you've exhausted all options, when you think you see an ending, remember this, you haven't. Think of all that he accomplished, all the endings that he saw in his life. The greatest eventer. I love thinking about this. All the things that he pushed through that we still enjoy today. If God doesn't give up on Israel, 
then God won't give up on you. The power of one more. And so many of you told me that this morning. One day at a time, Noah. You're always just one decision, one habit, one mindset away from amazing. This is the gift of Scripture. When the rest of the world sees endings, we see and experience hope in Jesus Christ. I think one of the very best things we do together is to offer a space for weekly AA and Al-Anon here on our, our campus. I recently talked to one man, and he said, look, Noah, I promised my family that I would stay sober for just, read it with me, one more day. <laughs> and this then became the foundation for his sobriety. He has now stayed sober for years, stacking up. Read it with me one more time. One more day. This has taught me the true power of one more. The hope of Amos. The power of one pushing through perceived endings. And the things that we do experience in these endings... I bring them to the font every week with you. And I reminded of myself when I just baptized Archer. Shame, embarrassment, failures, setbacks. But this qualifies me. And this qualifies you then to be helpful. To be able to connect with Archer and Gavin, Kenyon, Ayla, Eleanor in a little bit. What if the hardest things of life are the very things that qualify you? The last number of weeks have taught me so much, more than any degree that I have ever earned in my life turning pain into purpose. I think about this every time you tell me how much you've raised for ALS research and a cure. Millions. Without a doubt, you will be responsible to find a cure for ALS. And the rest of God's creation will sing your praises. You don't certainly do it for that. But you needed to get to work. You needed to do something. And you turned your pain into one of the greatest purposes I've ever seen. If you can survive pain, and I would say this, again, I'm, I'm still naive, I'm still young, and I'm learning a lot from you, but a lot of pain is temporary. It will take a bow at some point. And on the other side of it, you will meet another version of yourself. I'm literally seeing this right now. Don't get me wrong. Pain is horrible. But most of the time, with each other. I've noticed how you show up for one another, and I've noticed how my mother's church has shown up for her. I walk into that nursing home transition unit, and literally there is no blank space on the walls. She has cards everywhere reminding of her that she's not alone, that those perceived endings she sees will be not experienced alone. Here's what I love about studying books like Amos. 
most people operate out of a history and memory. Only about 5% of people operate out of vision and imagination. This is why children are happier. They live in imagination and dreams and not in endings or the past. But as we grow older, our history becomes our operating system. And to break free from that, we need to read more scripture like Amos and operate out of word and sacrament. And of course, imagination again. This is my childhood hero. Do I have a picture of him there? Do you remember him? Last night we were at the hockey game, so right now it's Kaprizov. But when I was a kid, uh, Kirill, Kaprizov. But when I was a kid, I was number 34. He never got hurt throughout his amazing career, his Hall of Fame career, until, until he took that fastball to the face, ultimately causing him to retire early. He said to the manager, Tom Kelly, Clearly, yeah, you got to take me out. But tomorrow I'm going to play again. He said he knew someone who had, all these people who had come and paid all this money to watch him play. And he wasn't going to miss playing the next day. That's love. That's Kirby. Love in what's in front of you one foot in front of the other, and your good wisdom this morning, Noah, one day at a time. His commitment wasn't about glory. It was about his love for the game and his fans. The girls are with grandma right now, but one of their favorite birthday activities is this right here. The candy didn't come out until the very end. It wasn't their final hit. Usually the little kid at the very end of the line hits it. It wasn't their final hit that broke the pinata. It was the cumulative blows. Life is like that. We keep just taking shots, and often we don't see progress. But every shot we take compounds the progress, even if it's invisible to our eyes. Most people quit before the candy comes out, but if you keep swinging, eventually the candy will come. Amos is God. God's long game is one where mercy can still emerge despite all odds. And especially when we only see endings.
living in imagination and dreams, we now gather our gifts for God's mission here in the heights and beyond. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance. Traveling through the centuries, the Apostles' Creed, they're just not ancient words. 
They're words of hope. They're words of imagination. And it's a living link now that we live together to the earliest Christians all the way to Christ himself. It's our faith. It's our story. And we say it together and connect to the roots of our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. And now with our mod squad leading the way, let us pray the prayer that our Lord Jesus has taught us in song. not perfect. It's okay. We're human. Israel, God's beloved in Christ, God Almighty, God most merciful, bless you, keep you, and give you peace. Amen.
Go in peace. Follow Jesus. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.